Australia lead the series against India 2-1 after a huge third test in Ahmedabad. Welcome everyone to Mumbai and Wankadi Stadium for the fourth test between India and Australia. This should be a cracking one uh, as part of our career mode. We've beaten India in a series at home. Now we've got a chance to do it away. The fourth and fifth tests, Australia obviously already winning two of the matches. We're gonna bat first, once again winning the toss. Very important. We'll see if we can put a first innings big score on the board. Four hundreds in our career, including a big match winning not out hundred at the last test match. And it was a big partnership with the man at the other end, Jake Fraser McGurk, who helped me get there. Now this is a day nighter as well, this one. It is a pink ball test. That was one thing I couldn't change. I could change the venue because I think it had us playing in Brisbane for the uh, fourth test but I was able to change it uh, here to Mumbai, but uh, not the start time. So it is a day-nighting uh, test, pink ball test. And I wonder if that'll make it a little bit harder, maybe, with the bat. But we will see how we go. Wait. Run. Yes. Quick single. The flickering of that uh, stand in the background. Very, very frustrating. That's not quite in the gap, but we'll be able to get the quick one. In case you're wondering why I sound a bit shit today, I was yelling at the football yesterday. Wait. That was all. No, I probably haven't got 100% of my voice back, but we push on, we persevere, and we see how we go. Leave that one. And this has been what we've proven in the last match is I don't have to bat insanely aggressive the entirety of an innings. I can sort of set myself in, get a few ciders, and build into the innings. Look at Fraser McGeek at the other end. He's five from 25. That's in the gap. That might go all the way. It's our first boundary of the day, and it brings up the 100 for the team. Two straight. Work to the onside. Should be two. Should be four. Another boundary. Oh, a lovely straight drive. It pierces the gap. We're able to pick up two runs. And we're just going about our business with a bit of ease at the moment. 22 balls, a couple of boundaries in there for our 13. Oh, bold. This one turned at right angles. Wasn't expecting it to turn that much. In the end, I am out. Four for 122. About the rest of this Australian side, a score of 250 odd. As Lance Morris takes an early wicket. And we've got a chance under the lights here on day one to potentially take a wicket late in the day. Played that very aggressively, Just Wall. He's found the boundary. Edged wicket. Big late in the day. India lose their third. So we check back in later in the innings. India, four for 117. Australia have done a really nice job at containing this first inning score after the nice little wickets under the lights. It's four for 117. Barca is in with Lala. We're hoping to break this little pairing that have put on a little bit together. A little outside edge would be nice. And at leg slip also very protective. That is unbelievable of a catch. I'm not sure who it was, but that was ridiculous. I don't even know what happened there because it definitely didn't look like he hit it to the man. Let's, oh he has, he's hit it straight to him and he's just boop, one hand taking the catch. Unbelievable from Jake Fraser McGurk. It's uh, Vasa out for 25. Five for 121. And all of a sudden, Australia's first inning score here of, what was it, 225. He's looking very, very good. Rowe and Lala out in the middle. Edged out. Two wickets for me. Here on day two. India six down. Big fist pumps. All around. And this first innings gets a little bit trickier for India. 
There's six for 137. Hutton Row out for eight. Oh, back pad. There's a little shout worthwhile here. But I think it was turning a little too much. Ooh, that's around the corner. That's four. Oh, that moves to 45. Oh, does it hit in line? No. Ooh, almost a chance. Oh, did he hit it? No. Very close, though. Cameron Green does the rest of the work. And this is a big partnership between Hardy and Fraser McGurk. And that even rhymed. And now I come to the middle. Oh, my goodness. Took me eight balls in the second innings to get off the mark. And I've done it with a big six. Oh, 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 my goodness. That ball turned so much, and yet I still hit it, and I hit it straight to whichever this guy is. What is going on here? Look at that. Insane. I mean, the ball teleported into his hand, but Jaiswell got me out with a catch. It's a five for 187. Now we're back in it with a chance, oh, to win the series. India, 312 is what's required for victory. They are three for 38 at the moment. Australia has them on the ropes. They need to put together a big time partnership. Catch it. Oh my goodness, he has. He actually has. Cameron Green, simply the best. It just doesn't make any sense that he takes a catch like that, does it? It's five for 72. We have seen some pretty ridiculous catches in this match. Especially uh, off the back of my bowling and the summit leg slip, there was Fraser McGurk at slip. The only way to, uh, even the way I got out in the second innings. But the way to complete a trio of stupid catches would be if you have one where you just smash it into silly point, it balloons up and someone else takes a catch. So if that happens to end this match, Tell you what, that would be unbelievable. Meanwhile, we've got the ball under lights. Australia, as we said, five wickets away from winning this series here in India and taking a unassailable 3-1 lead. After winning the toss and batting here, their combined first and second innings gave them a lead of 312. India still need 222 to win from here. They've got just five wickets in hand. Oh, a wicket. <laughs> Another stupid catch. This is actually very similar to how I got out. The ball turned a significant amount and the slip fielder is just there. It's six for 107. Didn't deserve to get out like that, Lala. Krishna comes to the middle, high score of 35 and they still need... 200 odd to level the series at two apiece. India in all sorts of trouble. Edge, and how is it actually not carried? Genuine edge, keeper could have taken it. First slip probably wouldn't have got there either. But Krishna in trouble. And then he absolutely smashes the next one to the boundary. Well done. That's very close. Is it, is it turning too much? Is that what the umpire's thinking? We've got three reviews. We could use one of them to try and get this seventh wicket. Where does it pitch? In line. Where does it hit? In line. But does it turn too much? Yes, it does. There it is. Australia win the match. Australia win the series. Beating India in India. It's 3-1. The lead is unassailable. I would have loved to have oh, done something other than crush the game, but that's what we've done. So I guess it was Xavier Bartlett who finished off the game as Aaron Hardy won the Player of the Match Award. The team winning by 70 runs in the end. I didn't really have too much of a contribution in this one, as you can see from the scorecard. Three wickets in the first, two in the second. With the bat, not great to be honest, um, but we did win the series 3-1 here in Mumbai. 
as Australia finished off India and secured a series win. Since we have secured the series, we're gonna jump into the fifth and final test as well now, which we are lucky enough to win the toss and bat first, which has proven to be one of the key factors in this series is winning the toss and batting first uh, in the conditions. Obviously batting fourth is gonna be tricky and have a look at this opening innings. Australia, brilliant. 211 for the opening stand, but India have taken three for two to have us at three for two, one, three. You got two new men in at the crease, Cameron Green and myself. Uh, current run rate, four and a half. There's another edge. Doesn't carry the keeper. But I'll tell you what, India, they've just turned the game a little bit here. So what we have done is we've clearly batted well and at a pretty quick rate. Um, obviously four and a half runs and over is quite a quick rate. There's no run there. And if we want to accelerate it, there will be an opportunity to do so. That is driven beautifully down the ground. That'll be four. It's clear this is just an unbelievably good batting wicket. And we probably want to make 400 to 450 in our first innings. Oh, I've hit it straight to cover. That is a disappointing way to get out. We're now five down. India have taken five for about 10 here. So Australia really have fallen apart at the seams. It's another single digit score, five for two, two, two. I'm disappointed. And once again, another little partnership brew for the Aussies as they get to about 380. And then Lance Morris goes bang, bang in the opening over, I think it was. India two for 37 now. After uh, eventually getting Australia at just under 400. So what can they do? What kind of score can they get in their re first innings reply? I mean, given the pitch conditions, you could end up getting a draw if you bat a long time. And we only batted for about 113 overs. And so if that is the longest innings of the game, that you're probably going to uh, get a result at some stage. Obviously, the pitch will deteriorate over time. We expect spin's obviously going to play a big factor. That's why we're already in here. But it was the quicks who actually did the damage early, which was Lance Morris. Uh, and disappointing not to see, I guess, a bigger crowd in today. Uh, given India a batting and uh, maybe perhaps because the series is over. There isn't as many people here as you might expect. Stop ball there. Edged. Taken by Green, I think it was. Finger up. Six wickets down. Edged. I think it's a bump ball, but you do never know. It was a bump ball. Edged. Onto the stumps. Jeez, Josh Inglis was off before I think anyone realised what had happened. Thought this was a chance of a catch. It hit the off stump, it went to ground, and I thought, oh, we've dropped one. But no, Krishna's out for a duck. It's 7 for 128. Oh, that is a ripper. It's gone through him. That is one of the best deliveries you'll see. Sliding straight through to hit the off stump. Hits the gap between bat and ball, uh, bat and pad, sorry. And it's eight for 134. So let's have a look at the replay. The ball comes out of the hand. It's going to slide straight through. No spin on your bike. Hits the middle stump. Or hits the middle of the off stump. A brilliant ball. I think I've taken three for none, really. Oh, and that's beaten the outside edge. Eight for 134. So they managed to make enough runs to avoid the follow-on India. They've got Australia at three for 108. Try and uh, bet a little bit more fun. That's off the outside of the blade. It'll be four. There's a big crack at the other end of the pitch. There's nothing really on this end. Just a few foot marks developing. And you are going to have to bet fourth here. In trying conditions, I've played that poorly. Vasa has tossed it fast. And he's got it through me to hit middle and off. So I did struggle. Another four, I think that's two fours. As India have a mammoth chase to try and overcome in this fourth innings. Got ball, 563 they need. Australia absolutely rip through India. They get them all out for 196. Todd Murphy wins your player of the game. I thought it would have been Will Sutherland. Uh, but we secure the series 4-1 in the end over in India. 
We will celebrate with, oh, not the Border Gavaska trophy, but with a shield once again. And then a little 30, so he made about 70 runs, Todd Murphy, as well as sort of five wickets across the match. Maybe not worthy of play of the game. I thought Sutherland's 101 was maybe there. He could have given it to Hardy, perhaps, but... I guess a uh, fairly even contribution meant that Todd Murphy does win your player of the game. Australia winning it by 366 runs in the end, uh, which is less than what they scored in both of their innings, which are very disappointing from an Indian point of view. It's a 4-1 result at the end of the series. Australia's uh, test tour of India complete now. We'll go to Dharamshala uh, to continue, we've got three one-day internationals, three T20 matches, and then we play the 100. And then we've got a gap. So I feel like we're going to know soon what it is that is actually on the horizon for us. This is 2029, uh, which would maybe be a T20 World Cup year. I'm trying to think about it. Unless the T20 World Cup would have been in 2028, but we didn't do that which means that this is probably an Ashes year in 2029. Or is the Ashes in 2027? No, the Ashes probably would be in 2029. It'd probably be a home Australian Ashes in 2029, which I think is what we're going to see. There's obviously two lots of Ashes here on the horizon. One of them we expect to be in Australia. The other might be in England. But still nothing about a World Cup. Uh, we'd love to play a World Cup. That's still one of our big goals um, for us to do across our career. So we're going to obviously pick our one day team in the next video as we get ready for that so thanks for watching today everyone the big india series is done and dusted australia ended uh still well and truly on top of the test ranking so thanks for watching and i'll see you all next time goodbye